This is a list of the five macronutrients, carbohydrate, protein, fat, water, and fiber. But I'm going to complicate things because I've discovered the six macronutrient, which we'll return to at the end of this presentation. The six macronutrient is not yet accepted by established science, but I'll make the case for it later. For now, let's limit ourselves to an analysis of the five macronutrients. Sometimes you'll find water and fiber excluded from this list. Sometimes we're told there are three macronutrients, but you need all five of these to live. So let's define all five as macronutrients. Um, if someone's gonna claim a health advantage to animal foods, it's gotta reside in at least one of these five macronutrients, right? Where else could it be? So let's take them one by one, starting with water. Severe dehydration can lead to seizures, kidney failure, coma, death. Chronic dehydration could lead to kidney stones, reduced kidney function, urinary tract infections, constipation, poor sleep, muscle damage, muscle spasms. Dehydration must be avoided at all costs. That reminds me. It's extremely important. This is not controversial. Nobody advocates dehydration. Do you drink eight glasses of water per day? Most of us don't. That's what's commonly recommended to prevent dehydration. But you'd have to do something like have a glass of water at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., noon, 2 p.m., 4 p.m., 6 p.m., 8 p.m., and 10 p.m. That's eight glasses of water. How many people do anything like that? I never did. I don't think I know anybody who drinks a glass of water every two hours like clockwork from the time they get up to the time they go to sleep. In the lay press, you'll often read that 75% of Americans are dehydrated. There's actually no study that supports that number. Still, it's a safe bet that a significant percentage of Americans don't take in enough water. But you don't have to get your water from a glass. You can and should obtain much of your water from food. What's more full of water? Plant foods or animal foods? Answer, plant foods. Apples are 86% water by weight. Cantaloupes are 89%. Strawberries, 92%. Broccoli, 92%. Zucchini and tomatoes are each 94%. Celery, 95%. Cucumbers and romaine lettuce are 96% water. Almost all fruits and vegetables are almost all water by weight. And it's the best, healthiest water on the planet. It's plant-filtered water. The cooking of whole grains is another ideal sauce, source of water. How do you make oatmeal? You boil oats, rice, buckwheat, millet, barley, quinoa. These are all cooked in water, and the grains absorb the water that's been purified to a large extent by boiling. Even legumes, beans, and lentils absorb the cooking water. But people don't generally boil bacon or chicken or burgers. So you have the filtered water that's naturally in plants, and you also gain water from cooking grains and legumes. I might have a big bowl of oatmeal in the morning, serve it over some mixed greens, top it with berries and grapes, and I'm probably getting as much water from the cooked oats, from the greens, from the fruit, as if I drank three or four glasses. But is there any water in meat? Yes, there's some water in meat. Meat has to be cooked, of course, and the higher the cooking temperature, the more water will be lost. Cooked meat, beef or chicken, for example, will generally be about 50 to 60% water. Some of that often comes from what's called the flavor solutions of water, salt, and sodium phosphate injected into the meat by supermarkets to freshen up the taste of foul decaying carcasses. Some of the water co content is also what's called retained water. It's the water used to wash the feces off the carcasses in the slaughterhouse. So you've got your choice of eating plant foods that are rich with naturally filtered water or eating animal foods and getting a little bit of slaughterhouse water and liquid flavoring from supermarkets. Clearly, advantage plants. There's probably been no avenue of nutritional science that, that has advanced more in the last 40 years than the study of fiber. We know that it healthfully slows down digestion, normalizes blood sugar levels, carries cholesterol out of the blood, out of the body, promotes healthy colonies of bacteria in the gut, lowers the risk of heart disease, diabetes, diverticular disease, colon cancer, and constipation, 
and has countless other beneficial effects, including fighting depression. And of course, fiber is only in plant foods. There's absolutely no fiber in any animal foods unless you get lucky and eat a fish that swallowed part of a fishing net. One reason you need fiber is for the metabolites they produce. Metabolites are substances produced during metabolism, the reactions in our cells that change food into energy. And it just so happens that dietary fiber is crucial to creating metabolites that improve our health and even metabolites that can improve our mood. As explained in the book, Fiber Fueled by Dr. Will Bolshevitz, plants protect and nourish us in large part because of fiber. So forophane from cruciferous vegetables, for example, increases healthy gut microbes like butyrates and repairs the intestinal lining to reverse leaky gut. But it just so happens that metabolites from meat consumption are dangerous. In the words of Dr. B, when people ingest L-carnitine, which is abundant in red meat, the gut bacteria produce TMAO. Increased TMAO means increased risk of heart disease, stroke, Alzheimer's, type 2 diabetes, chronic kidney disease, peripheral artery disease, congestive heart failure, and atrial fibrillation. To sum it up, fiber is what your body craves to create health-promoting metabolites. Animal foods have no fiber, and it just so happens that they create toxic metabolites. The macronutrient score is now plants 2, animals 0. If there's any advantage to be found in animal foods, it's clearly got nothing to do with water or fiber. So it's time to move on to the third macronutrient, carbohydrate. Carbohydrate is the most misunderstood macronutrient. We need to understand it better. Let's start with the question, are potatoes carbs? No. Potatoes are not carbs. Potatoes are a root vegetable, like beets and sweet potatoes. 90% of the calories in a sweet potato come from carbohydrate. 9% from protein, 1% from fat. 86% of the calories in a carrot come from carbohydrate. 9% from protein, 5% from fat. 83% of the calories in beets come from carbohydrate, 13% from protein, 4% from fat. And the russet potato, 88% come from carbohydrate, 11% from protein, 1% from fat. So you can see that the potato is in line with other root vegetables and having most of its calories from carbohydrate, while still offering a significant amount of protein and a smidgen of fat. If you try to reduce a potato to a carb, you're ignoring its significant protein content, ignoring its slight amount of fat, ignoring its substantial content of water, which is about 75 to 80% of the potato by weight, and ignoring its fiber. It contains all five macronutrients after all, as all human food does. And don't ignore the vitamins and minerals it contains, vitamin B1, B2, B3, uh, B6, vitamin C, calcium, iron, magnesium, phosphorus, and potassium. So it's not a carb, it's a whole food. We have to stop calling potatoes carbs. This is a destructive myth. The only foods that should be identified with single macronutrients are the ones I've listed in this slide. All oils and butter are 100% fat so it's accurate to refer to them as fat. Sugar in all its forms, white sugar, brown sugar, agave nectar, coconut sugar, it's all sugar, it's all carbohydrate. Egg whites are pretty close to being a pure protein, but potatoes are not a carb. Here's why the potato is a great weight loss food. Even though potatoes are very filling, there's actually less than one calorie per gram of potato. Now, how can that be? People call potatoes carbs, right? And we know that there are four calories per gram of carbohydrate. So how can there be less than one calorie per gram of potato if it's a carbohydrate? Shouldn't potatoes be four calories per gram? Answer, potatoes are not a carbohydrate. As I said, they're a root vegetable. And by weight, they're mostly fiber and water. 
So you're filling yourself up on a lot on a vegetable that's got a lot of zero calorie content, a lot of fiber and water, leaving the potato with one calorie per gram. How about bread? Is bread a carb? No. Ezekiel sprouted grain bread made with sprouted wheat, filtered water, sprouted barley, sprouted millet, sprouted lentils, sprouted soybeans, sprouted spelt, yeast, gluten, and sesame seeds is 80 calories per slice and is 25% protein with one gram of fat. It's about 70% carbohydrate. So it's not a carb. It's a processed food. But as breads go, it's a pretty healthy one with a range of nutrients. Other breads may not be that healthy, but no bread is a pure carb. How about tortillas? Are they carbs? I have a package of corn tortillas. It's got 60 calories, about four of which come from protein and three from fat. And this is clearly protein and fat that derives from the corn. So the tortilla is not a carb. Is pasta a carb? I've got some red lentil penne made from red lentil flour and brown rice flour in a three and a half ounce serving. It's got 22 grams of protein and two grams of fat. It's extremely high in protein. It's not a carb. How about regular old semolina wheat pasta? I've got a package of 100% semolina spaghetti that says that a two ounce serving has six grams of protein. And I don't know about you, but when I eat spaghetti, I eat more than two ounces. So there's plenty of protein in pasta. It's not a carb. Again, pasta is a processed food, not as healthy as a sweet potato, but it's not a carb. Only sugar in its many forms is a carb. Are donuts carbs? Donuts have plenty of sugar. Are they carbs? No. Donuts have oil and they may have dairy or eggs. Donuts are going to be very high in fat as well as sugar. Donuts are unhealthy for more reasons than I can count, but they shouldn't be called carbs and thereby slander carbohydrate, the natural fuel for the human body and the sacred joining of carbon and water that makes life possible. If you're going to claim that there's anything wrong with carbohydrate, you have to claim that there's something wrong with all vegetables and all fruits. We know that these are the healthiest foods on the planet, rich in fiber and antioxidants and vitamins and minerals. People never say that they're on a diet, so they have to avoid broccoli. But they do say that they're avoiding carbs because they're trying to lose weight. But most of the calories in broccoli come from carbohydrate, although there's also a good amount of protein and a little bit of fat. So why do people associate carbohydrate with being fattening? For one thing, because sugar, which is truly carbohydrate, 100% carbohydrate, is terribly fattening. There are 1,775 calories in a pound of sugar, which is truly a carb. There are 350 to 400 calories in a pound of potatoes, which of course is a root vegetable. So yes, Carbs are fattening if you're eating a pure carb, sugar or maple syrup, but don't mislabel potatoes as carbs and then claim they're fattening. The magician Pendulette lost over 100 pounds eating a diet of nothing but potatoes. Carbohydrate within whole foods is a good thing. It's a necessary thing. You can't live without it. Plants are what provide you with carbohydrates. Just as there's no fiber in meat, there's no carbohydrate in meat. So once again, we have a no-brainer macronutrient category. When it comes to carbohydrate, which is indispensable to life, plants provide it and flesh foods simply do not. So clearly plants are superior to animal foods when it comes to macronutrient number three, carbohydrate. That brings us to fat. We're up to macronutrient number four. The advocates of the paleo diet and the keto diet want to try to convince you that fat doesn't make you fat. Okay, what does? Broccoli, cauliflower, brown rice, apples, tea? The argument is so preposterous that it's hard to take seriously. In your own experience, have you ever known anyone to get fat on broccoli? Look, we know what contributes to obesity. Highly caloric foods, including some vegan ones. Alcohol, all forms of isolated sugars and oils, which are 100% fat, and flesh foods, which are usually in the range of 50% fat, and dairy foods, which are extremely high in fat. When you eat a whole foods vegan diet, and if you eliminate or absolutely minimize sugar, oil, and alcohol, 
it's all but impossible to get fat. Now you need some fat in your diet. It's one of the macronutrients after all. So what's the problem with eating too much fat? To start off with, it's got nine calories per gram instead of four calories per gram of carbohydrate. So over time, if you're eating a diet that's got 35 or 40% of your calories coming from fat, of course you'll gain weight compared to a diet that's say 10% calories as fat. 